Hello, everyone. Now, so now we're going to talk about、uh, a useful tool that we can use to visualize and help us understand motions better, which is a position time graph and a velocity time graph. So, position time graph is a graph that shows an object's、uh, position、uh, over time. Okay, as a function of time. Now, when you join the graph, there are two axes that you need to fill in. The horizontal axis are the independent independent variable on the x-axis. That is for our time unit, which is measured usually, preferably in seconds, right? And the dependent variable is, which is the vertical axis on the y-axis, is the position. Okay, so let's say you have an object right here. Okay, so zero meter at so at the beginning of time is at the origin, and then one second later is ten meters from the origin to the right hand side, and two second later is twenty meters from the origin to the right hand side, and so on. Okay, so every it looks like every single second the object moves ten meters to the right hand side. So therefore, if I want to plot a position time graph, it will look something like this. And so in the graph, you need to have at、uh, everything label, so the axis. Has to be labeled. So the vertical axis we said is for position. So you have to actually write down the word position. Not only that, you if your position shows direction, you also have to include it in there. So now our we our, for us is the right hand side. So we also put the right hand side in there. On the horizontal axis, which is the x axis,、uh, the unit or I mean the、uh, quantity that we want to represent there is time. So time is measured in seconds. So you give the name and the unit. Now on top, you would usually to provide a title, okay? So a title and a title tells people what this graph is about. So this is the position versus time graph for the car. So we just say position versus time graph is okay. Or you can say position versus time graph of, for the car. Now, so you need a title. Now then, let's put the data points in: zero second, zero meter, one second later, one second later, right? Ten meters. So that's how you put it in: two second later, twenty meter, three second, forty, and fifty. There you go. So this is all of the numbers that you need. Now, then, what you need to do is that's why I say you have to have a ruler with you. Sometimes when you do physics now, so at this point, that what you need to do is use the ruler to try to draw a straight line that goes through all the point as much as possible. You don't have to stop at the point. Now, the thing is, these numbers that I have、um, list in discussion right here, these numbers are made up number, so they look really nice. Now, in reality, when you are actually measuring something in real life. Most likely, the data point will look somewhat like fuzzier, so they will not look as perfect as something that we just make up a number for, right? So a lot of time, they they might look something like this, go like oh up down up down a little bit like that, right? So we draw a line through them. That line that you should draw is called a best fit line. So we will talk about that in a little bit when we actually well, we will talk about that when we do our first lab, for example. Okay, so you draw a line that goes through the point, draw a best fit line. Then, what you do is, when you have a straight line, your math teacher a lot of time will ask you, "Let's go calculate the slope of the line, right?" So let's calculate the slope of this line. So remember how to calculate slope. Now, just like a one minute review, a、um, one minute review. Okay, so now、uh, if you、uh, have a line. And you want to measure its slope,、uh, then you have to grab two points on the line like this, one point, two point, and then the two point is going to have some coordinate. So, for example, this point is at the coordinate of x one y one. This point right here, the second point, is at the coordinate of x two y two. Then, what do you do once you have those two point? Is you do a rise over run, right? So, if you want the slope for the,、uh, for this, you do a rise over run. Okay, so that means for us, so slope is equal to rise of run. So for us, we need to grab two points first, right? And the symbol for slope is usually m.、Uh, so we'll just say, okay. So right now, let's do the slope. So the slope for us is now rise of run, right? So let's okay grab two point. The first rule. That you should know about picking point is that 
points that are far away from each other as possible. So for example, picking these two will be a bad idea because they're right next to each other. So if you have the space for it, pick something really far away. So I'm going to pick point one over there and the second point over here. They're far away enough. I like it. Okay. So that's our two points. And then we calculate our slope. So therefore, now if we grab those points, then that means our x1 is going to be this number 1. And then our x2 is going to be this number 5. And our y1 is going to be this number 10. And then our y2 is going to be this number 50. Okay. So therefore, if you follow the equation, uh, so the equation is rise over 1, which is technically y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So 50 minus 10 over 5 minus 1. Okay, so when you do slope, the slope equation, rise over run, means y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2. Okay, so we're following that equation. So y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2 which in this case is going to be 40 and 4. Now, but the 40 is from the vertical axis. The difference between these two is 40. So the unit is meter because we are pulling that number from the position. X. However, in the uh, horizontal axis, we are pulling the difference between these two, which is 4, but that is in a second because I mean, this 40 has a unit of meter, and this 4 has a unit of seconds. Wait a second, no pun intended. This unit looks awfully familiar. What on earth is this unit? Meter per second. Well, if we only know something that has a unit of meter per second. Oh, we do. Meter per second is the unit for velocity or speed if you don't have direction. Yay! That means we have discovered something useful in physics, which is the slope of a position time graph will give you the velocity of the object. Okay, so let me repeat. The slope of a position time graph, like a DT graph, right? The slope of a position time graph gives you velocity. Okay, so now, not only that, uh, so if you look at it, if the DT graph shows a straight line, which is what we have right now, right? So DT graph shows a straight line. That means every second you're moving exactly the same rate. That means your velocity or your speed is steady. That means you have something we call a constant velocity. Or constant speed if you don't have direction then we call it constant speed if you have direction it's called constant velocity so if the DT graph shows a straight line then you're traveling at constant speed or constant velocity so what is our velocity right now well, we just calculated that it was 10 meter per second for every second is 10 meter per second so therefore if you want to plot a velocity versus time graph that means how fast you're moving at every second so again, you should have the vertical axis label, horizontal axis also label. Now I forgot to label the horizontal axis. It should be time, measure in seconds. I also need a direction. Well, it was going to the right-hand side, so it's still right. Now, so the speed is 10 meter per second at the beginning, 10 meter per second in one second, 10 meter per second, is 10 meter per second all the way through. So therefore, it makes a pretty boring graph. You should always draw these type of graph with a ruler now, I have a tablet, and as you all know, a tablet has a glass screen. I'm writing with my plastic stylus on a glass screen, so it's very slippery. So therefore, for me, I cannot place a ruler on it. You should use a ruler. Your graph should not look like, you know, a squeaky line. Constant velocity, okay? So when you have a constant, have you, when you position time graph is a straight line which means it has constant slope but the slope of a dt graph equals to velocity so this is a framing okay so there are other 
Uh, so let's look at a couple more examples. So I have P uh, label some of these, so you can pause the video and label them. So uh, this placement time graph will be on the top, and then we will draw the appropriate velocity time graph in the bottom, and we'll look, do a couple of these examples. So the first one, so let's say you move from here to over there. So let me grab this point and this point and line it up. Okay, so yeah, so move from here to here. Oops, there we go. Move from here to here. There. Now, straight line. So let's say it's a straight line. Okay. All right. Now, time in this case, of course, is measured in seconds. Right? So time is always, always measured in seconds. So, and how, uh, vertically, we have a displacement. So this is the DT graph, displacement time graph. Okay, so from the displacement time graph, we can tell one thing, which is its slope. If we can measure the slope of this displacement time graph, okay, then we'll be able to tell what is the velocity of this constant speed. Now, why do I know this is constant speed? Because the velocity, the displacement time graph is a straight line. That means you have constant velocity. You're moving at exactly the same rate in every second. You're not speeding up or slowing down. So we just have to find it once. Now, so let me say okay so for example from let's pick two points why don't we pick this starting point and this one right here so the difference between these two points horizontally is eight seconds what is the difference vertically between those two points okay think about it. 10 0 or 20. the answer is 20. the difference between those two points is actually 20 meters because you're, you're moving from negative 10 to positive 10. You have to move 20 meters in order to do that. So the run is 20. Rise is 20. Run is 8. Sorry. So the slope, then you need a calculator. It's going to be 20 meter in 8 seconds. So that's 2.5 meter per second. That's your slope. But now remember, your slope is also the velocity or displacement if you don't have direction. Uh, or a speed if you don't have direction, right? It's also your speed or velocity. So we can then use this displacement time graph to draw a velocity time graph. So in this case, now this slope, okay, this slope right here is a positive slope, right? Now in math, you have to remember a line that goes to the upper right hand has positive slope. A line that is completely horizontal has zero slope. Right, the slope equal to zero. A line that goes to the lower right uh, right hand corner has a negative slope. So right now, do we have a positive slope, negative slope, or zero slope? We have a positive slope, right? Now, but remember, slope from a DT graph is equal to the velocity of the v, uh, velocity of the object. So therefore, a positive slope also means a positive velocity. That means you're moving in the positive direction. Maybe you're moving to the right-hand side or north. So in this velocity time graph, this is where zero is. That means all of these numbers will be positive number one, two, three, and so on. Then all of these numbers are below, it will be negative number, like negative one meter per second, negative two meter per second, negative three meter per second. So where are we right now? 2.5 meter per second, positive or negative? Well, is our slope positive or negative? It was a positive slope, so this is also positive. So positive 2.5 meter per second constantly. Now, we only have eight seconds of data, so we should appropriately stop it at eight seconds. So let me try to stop it at eight seconds. Oops, all my straight lines are bad. There, there, stop at eight seconds. Because we only have eight seconds of data from before, from the above. Okay, now, so let's look at another one. So there are a couple of them that I want you to try. So, uh, I want to show you this another one. So let's say we have something that. Uh, so for this one, we don't. We won't. I won't put numbers in it. We're just talking about it generally. So for example, if you have something that goes like this, then uh, you ask yourself, uh, what kind of slope is this? Now this is a negative slope. So negative slope means that you're gonna have negative velocity, 
right? Negative speed, negative velocity. So on your this on your velocity time graph, so the vertical axis is velocity, measure in meter per second. So on your VT graph, what should the function look like? Well, you have a negative constant velocity, right? So negative constant velocity. So these are negative numbers, right? So for so I'm not going to put numbers in it. So negative constant velocity there. Negative constant velocity. Okay. So let's try another one. DT graph example number three. What if your DT graph so that's your displacement measuring meter, velocity measuring meter per second. So what if your DT graph is straight, horizontal, like that? So what's the slope in here? If I want to use the DT graph to figure out a VT graph, what's your slope? Your slope is zero. So therefore, but your but this number is also the velocity. So what does it mean when the velocity of the object is zero? That means the object has stopped or the object is stationary. Okay, the object is stationary. So what would the equation uh, what would the VT graph look like when the object is stationary? Okay, so when the object is stationary, wouldn't its and its speed is zero, then how do you represent them? It's just drawing a line <laughs> at zero. Right, so this object isn't actually moving with any velocity. There we go. Okay, so moving on to the next page. Okay, so now on to the next page, we have a combined velocity uh, position time graph. That means it has different sections in it right now. And we want to generate a, of course, from the position time graph, what we have been doing is generating a velocity time graph. So I would like to know how fast the car is driving at different sections of time. So the velocity of a car. So let's say that is the, the unit, the velocity of car. That is the title of my, my graph. So I would like to get a velocity of a car. Okay. Uh, graph in there. So where velocity is going to the vertical axis, meter per second, and the uh, time is going to the horizontal axis, uh, which is measured in seconds. Now, so that means I would like to know the slope from the position time graph. Now, but there, there you go. The problem is the this position time graph has multiple sections that has different type of slope. So we're going to section it out. We're going to call this section A, which is the uh, location from 0 second to 2 second in section A. And then you notice that the um, slope actually changes to this horizontal line. So this is called section B, uh, where we will uh, deal with later. And then this is section C, which is another slope. And then this is section D, which is another slope. Okay. So now, luckily, though, every section is a straight line on its own, right? They are just different sections, but every section is a straight line. So we can still do a slope. OK, so let's deal with section A first. So from 0 to 2 seconds, what is the velocity from 0 to 2 seconds? So section A, velocity. Now we're picking these two points, OK? So uh, you have to look at the number on the side. So rise over run. So the average velocity, rise over run. So 7 minus 0, that is vertically, y1, y2 minus y1. And then x2 minus x1 is 2 minus 0, which means 7 over 2, which is 3.5 meter per second. Technically, they forgot to give us the direction, so I don't have to give them direction on the velocity either. Okay, so for the first two seconds in section A, our speed is 3.5 meter per second. So we can actually take this time and put that into our velocity time graph. So in our velocity time graph, for the first two seconds from 0 to 2 right here, your car is moving at 2.5 meter per second consistently. So 2.5 meter per second consistently. Right? So 2 is here, 2.5. Again, you should always use the ruler. Okay, so there we go. This is section A. Two and a half meter per second for the first two seconds. 
two and a half meter per second, right? Okay, now section B. Oh, section B is easy. <laughs> it's a horizontal line. <laughs> so section B is this horizontal line, which has a slope of zero, right? Horizontal line has a slope of zero. So from two to three seconds, your slope is zero. So let's answer this question. So this is section B. From two to three seconds, uh, the velocity is zero meter per second. So we'll do the next one first. Uh, so together, then we will draw, draw it together, right? Section C. Now section C, oh, no longer horizontal line, unfortunately. So we have to actually pick point then. Uh, so we are going to pick uh, this point and this point. Remember, my philosophy is always as far away as possible, right? When you're picking two points. It's easier to see the difference when you're really, really far away from it. So the two data points is going to be uh, uh, line. This one is right here. Nine. Let me highlight it. Line. And this one is here, which is seven. And this is five seconds. That's three seconds. Okay, good. So y1 minus y2 is going to be nine minus seven. Okay, let's calculate. So the velocity, average velocity, nine minus seven, and then horizontally, five minus three. So together is actually just two over two, which means the velocity is one meter per second. Okay, so now we have B and C. B is zero meter per second, V is one meter per second, so let's put both of them in. So zero meter per second for this two to three, which is like right here. So I'll do a dollar line. So this is like a jump because it seems like they're able to change from one speed to another speed instantaneously. And then from three to five, three to four, well, actually it is three to five. There you go, three to five, jump. And then, so you're traveling at one meter per second during that time. So this is session C. Okay, now, why is the graph jumping its speed? Now, because this picture right here, this position time graph is not realistic. You don't go from a certain speed to stop without slowing down. So in, in reality, this graph should be more smooth. It should have been like this. Right. Of course, you can slow down, speed up, whatever, travel at constant speed. But there should be smooth transition between two. So you don't go from 30 km per hour to zero km per hour in like no time. Okay, technically, if you hit a wall, yes. <laughs> right, if you're driving and then you hit a wall, then you go from maximum speed to no speed in like a fraction of a second. But even that is not like nothing it's not like an instantaneous stop you're still being slowed down so even if you just hit a wall the cut is still still look like ooh like this right so these should still be smooth instead of like a corner but unfortunately well i mean not unfortunately i mean just for practice point of view uh these transition point is sharp so there is no like in reality when you're measuring the cost, it should be like a curve like this instead of like this sharp corner. But because they do have a sharp corner, so we have this like very unrealistic uh, speed changing instantaneously between one section to another. But that's okay. You know, just doing it as a practice, right? Now, last point. Five to six seconds. So that's section D right here. Uh, we're going to pick two points uh, as far as possible. That is always the game. So we're going to pick this one and that one. And I'm just write down the coordinate. This one is a five nine. Uh, this one is a six one. Okay, so y one minus y two nine minus one x one minus x two is five minus six. Okay, so therefore, v velocity uh, y one minus y two nine minus one x one minus x two five minus six. I get an eight on top and a negative one on the bottom, so negative eight meter per second. Oh, the car is going backward. When you have a negative velocity, that means the car is going backward. So during that session, the car is going backward. Now it makes sense because you are like getting further and further away from the origin during that time. And at, during this time, you basically stopped, right? And then that time you travel forward again. And then here you come home, kind of. You didn't actually go to zero, so you didn't come home. But you um, are trying to return home at this point. So that's a negative slope. That means your car is driving backwards. So it makes sense. So that means uh, we're going to have a negative eight, which is right here. OK, so there we go. Da, 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 da. All right. There we go. 
So this is the final velocity of a car, velocity time graph. Okay, now, um, there seems to be two more questions though. Hmm. Okay, so the next question is two to six seconds. Two to six seconds, huh? Two seconds, okay, so let me cancel out all the other numbers and just leave the two seconds and six seconds in here. Wait, these are not straight lines. If you count from two to six seconds, I don't think I see a straight line. This is this point is two seven, by the way. Well, then what do you do? Well, you can still figure out the average velocity, even though it, there are some ups and downs in between, uh, by linking these two lines together. So what you need to do if they ask you to find a average velocity from two points, but then there are no straight line going through those two points, is that you draw your own straight line. There. Like you, you draw your own. Now, usually we would like to draw a dollar line to indicate that this is not an original part of the graph. It's something that we add in. So we are trying to find the slope, the average speed. I mean, think about it. We are just looking at the average velocity. So of course, people understand that sometimes you're going faster, sometimes you're going slower, but we're only looking for the average. So if you're looking for the average, that's all you need to do. Draw a line in between the two of them and then figure out the slope of this line. So we have these two data points, six, one and two, seven, just use wise over run on them and you'll be able to get the slope. Now, is that slope positive or negative? The green one, negative, right? So if you're getting a negative number, then it's good. So zero to six, six seconds. So now uh, a y1 minus y2. So I would do seven minus one and two minus six. Seven minus one, two minus six. Seven minus one is vertical. Two minus six is horizontal. Okay, so six meters on top, four seconds in the bottom, but it's negative four because it's two minus six. So this is actually negative one and a half. So it's one and a half meter per second, but it's a negative one and a half meter per second. Okay, so how fast is your car driving? What is your average speed, uh, average velocity between two to six seconds? Well, between two to six seconds, you actually overall went backwards by like a half, one and a half meter per second. Okay, so now the last one is the same idea. You just start at a different point. So um, if you want to pause the video and try this one on your, on your own, so just put a point on three, put a point on six and try to draw a line between them and get the slope. So pause the video and then when you're done, unpause it. I'll write the answer down. Now, so do you get negative two meter per second? Do you forget the negative? Do you have the negative? Okay, good. All right. Now, so these are all average velocity. So that means uh, it's over a period of time, the overall average. In reality, remember I show you that you know the graph shouldn't actually have those really really sharp corners. That doesn't make any sense. So in reality, you also don't travel at constant speed all the time. Your car speed up when you, for example, try to go faster, and it slows down when you hit a traffic light. So your car is constantly changing its speed. It's not like constant speed all the time. So let's do one example now. So this example, I want to draw a. Uh, this is a rocket taking off. So that means uh, this is a vehicle propelled by like an explosive, right? So it's going faster and faster because it's trying to leave the earth. So it's taking off. Now find the final velocity. Okay, we know how to do that. We plot the data point and then we will, okay, so they didn't say find the final for average velocity from where to where. We we're going to assume that this is from the beginning to the end, right? Because if the question didn't say from what time to what time, then you can only assume that they meant the whole time, right? So it's going to be from zero second to the whatever last second is. Now that's for part A. So graph the position time graph, okay? And then find the, huh, what is this thing? Instant noodle, no, instant ladies, instantaneous, right? This is called instantaneous velocity at 20 and 40 seconds. So what is the instantaneous velocity? Instant means at a point, at a moment, right? So that means I don't want your average 
velocity. I want to know exactly how fast you're driving at 20 seconds and 40 seconds. That means you're driving, right? You Sometimes you go faster, sometimes you go slower. At the end, if I know how far you have traveled and I know how long you have traveled for, I can figure out your average velocity. But what if I phone you? You're driving. I suddenly give you a phone call. Now, you should not be answering a phone call in the car. So let's say you are the passenger. <laughs> so safety first, right? You're a passenger. So you are in someone else's car. I phone you at that very second and I ask you, hey, go peek at the speedometer of your car and tell me how fast you're going at this moment. You might say, well, I have covered 30 kilometers in the first five hours. And I would say, I don't care about how far you have covered in the last 30 minutes or hours. I need to know how fast you're driving right now. I would need your instantaneous velocity. That means I don't care about the past or the future. I just care about right now how fast your car is going. So the instantaneous velocity is exactly what the speedometer in your car shows you. It doesn't show you your average velocity. The speedometer in front of your car always show you how fast you're driving right now. That's the instantaneous velocity. Now, but in most car, um, at least my car does it. Uh, every time after I shut off the car, right? So I go for a drive, go for um, buy something. It will tell me after I power off the car my average velocity for the last like a few hours. So I do get that value. Uh, but at the end. So when I'm looking at the speedometer, when when I'm driving, I only have the instantaneous number, not the average. Okay, so how do we tackle this question? We will begin by actually plotting the data point. Now I'm going to actually pause the video for, pause my recording, and I will plot it. So you go plot it. Uh, so it will show up like magically done in the next second because I'm doing it in the, uh, without the recording on. Right, you don't have to see me like potting every single point. Okay, you can pot it yourself. Okay, I'll give you the first point. First point is zero zero. There you go. Second point is ten, fifteen. Uh, now one thing about like um putting numbers or um adjusting information like this is when you look at a scale, right? This is a scale from zero to one hundred, separated by five boxes. That means each box is how much, right? So think about it. So that means each box is twenty. In this case, now the first data point is 10 second, 15 meters. That means I can even hit the 20. So we have to be slightly lower than 20. So 10 second, so 15 is around here, I guess, right? So not quite yet at 20. And then the next point is, well, 20 seconds, 60, 20 seconds, which is right here, 60. So if that's 20, then this is 40, 60 would be here, right? So, and then you keep going, okay? You keep going. So for the sam uh, sample, the next one, 30 is 135, 30. So 100 is here, 120 is here, right? 140 is here. So 135 is almost 140. So it's almost that one. So that means it's going to be almost here, right? Almost there, but not quite. So slightly lower. So that's 135. So 30 and 135 should be right here. So if you move on uh, and pot all the rest, so I will go ahead, pause the video, I'll pot it. All right, now magically my graph is done. So I have all the data points in here. So now it's time to put a best fit line, a smooth curve to try to go through as many points as you could. Now, but you have to remember one thing though. In real life, sometimes the data point doesn't look like they are lining up, they might have some up and down like this. So when you're graphing a line, a best fit line that try to show yourself a trend that you can use, you're not doing collecting the dots, okay? In no circumstances in any part of physics that you should be that you should be doing this, okay? This will never be something that we ask you to do. Never. Okay, do not try collecting the dots. That's a game that you can play <laughs> with, with when you a game that you play when you're younger, right? There's some like you know pay, coloring books that you have collected dots that you can play. Not that we're trying to draw a trend. We're trying to find a overall trend uh, from the data point. That means we are looking for the trend only, 
and not caring about the individual point as much. So for example, if you have a set of data point that looks like this, then this will be the trend. So that means it's obviously trying to go up uh, and it starts low at the beginning. So you're trying to balance out the point for on each side. You, your goal is not to hit any pink single point. Your goal is trying to go in between them so that you're showing a trend only, not like a specific thing. Okay. Now, of course, in our example, because the numbers are made up, it will look perfect. So it will look like I'm going through all the point, but I don't have to. If the points are not perfect, I don't have to. Okay. So going back to here, I can now draw a line that try to show the trend. Okay, so for me, it is, I'm going to shrink the screen a little bit. Oops. Okay, so like, wow. Okay, I'll pause it and do it. <laughs> okay, now it's magically done. So my graph is done. So what is the average velocity? Now remember, what is the average velocity? The average velocity, uh, now since they didn't uh, ask us, so find the average velocity um, from where to where, right? Average is between two time. If they didn't say any time, then it's between the beginning and the end. So the beginning is, well, of course, zero, zero. That's the beginning. And the end is, well, the last point, which is 6540. Uh, so technically, imagine that you're doing a, let's say, dollar line, and then you're finding the slope of the dollar line. That's what you're doing. So average is very easy to do, okay? So average velocity is very easy to do. So we can do the average velocity uh, on the side. So, and then we'll do the instantaneous thing in the middle. So the average velocity, uh, which is uh, the rise over one of those two points. So now this point right here, like this point on top is 6540. Okay, so 6540. Uh, and the other point over there is zero, zero. So it's 540 minus zero, 60 minus zero. That's the slope of the dollar line on average, right? So you move 540 kilometers, uh, meters uh, in 60 seconds, okay? So take a calculator. Um, so that will be 90, right? So on average, uh, this is, yep, 90, no, not 90, 9, 9 meter per second. There you go, on average. So your average velocity is 9 meter per second. Now, let's do the instantaneous velocity, which is the actually the actual fun part of this. So instantaneous velocity, now, what is the instantaneous velocity? So instantaneous velocity is also the slope on this graph, but it's a special type of slope. So what you need to do is let's, now they ask us to find it for two time, which is 20 and 40 seconds. I will just do 20 seconds. So at time equal to 20 seconds. Okay, so what we do is we find the point on 20 seconds, which is over here. Now, this is our target. At this point, 20 seconds is our target. So what you need to do is draw a something we call a tangent line on that 20 second. So what is a tangent line? A tangent line is a line that touches a point and try to balance the amount of space that is on the left and on the right. So for example, now let me show you an example. So let's say this is our target point and I would like to draw a tangent line on that point. The tangent line would be something that looks like this. So it shows you the slope of that point only. This is called a tangent line. Okay. It's a line that touches the graph at only one point, which is the point of target that you are being asked to investigate. And your goal is think about trying to balance the angle on the two sides then you have to draw a good tangent line. So what are some bad tangent line, which I would draw any ways. So for example, I want to slope on that point and you did this. That's bad, sad face. Okay, that's a bad tangent line. Why is the point like that, right? So this is happy face. 
and or for example, let's say your curve is like that, and then you try to do a tangent line over here. Maybe you did follow Mr. Chang's su suggestion, which is Chang only touching the graph on one point, but then you did something like that. Okay, so this is also bad because why is the angle on the left hand side so much smaller than the angle on the right hand side? Like that doesn't look balanced to me. This is also a bad tangent line. So to figure out the slope at one moment, you need to know how to draw a good tangent line. So the best thing to do is use a ruler and then balance your rulers around that point of target. And then just try to move your ruler sideways, uh, move your ruler. Um, uh, so one of the way you can do it is put a pencil onto the target point and have your ruler touching the pencil and just try to move the ruler without moving the pencil. So have the pencil fixed on that point. Okay, push down and then have a ruler uh, sitting next to that point on the pencil and just try to turn the rulers around, uh, turn the rulers uh, to a different angle until the both side of that looks very nice. So until both side looks like the angles is around the same, then you draw a line on it. So I will draw one on the 20 seconds. Okay, so here's my attempt. I'll draw it in orange so that it stands out. Okay, so here's my tension line. Okay, sometimes it takes more than one try, and that is perfectly okay. Trying to balance out the angle. Again, I'm using a glass screen, so it's not like the piteous thing for me because I don't have a proper ruler that I can use. There we go. This is my best attempt. You can draw it longer. So draw it, try to, okay. The thing about slope is the longer the line is, the easier for you, the easier it is for you to get the slope. So if you have a long ruler, draw it longer. Okay, so this is my tangent line. Okay, so this is my tangent line for the 20 second. Okay, so how do you get instantaneous velocity? Instantaneous velocity the slope of the tangent line at that point, okay? It's the slope of the tangent line at that point. So for example, if you want the slope at 20 seconds, draw a tangent line at 20 seconds and figure out the slope of the tangent line. Now, this is going to be more difficult than doing the other one because the data point is now not given. Okay, so. Now, what, what point should you take to find the slope? You should take point that looks good. What points looks good? The point that looks good on the point that is touching the, uh, like touching the crossing of your, your graph. So for example, uh, like this point looks good. Like right here, this green point looks good because it's kind of crossing right in the middle between the horizontal and the vertical grid. So that means it's easy to read off that number. Now, what is this number, for example? This number is 40 for x, and for y, I think it's 160. Okay, so it's 40, 160. Okay, now, of course, um, depending on what your graph looks like, some, I mean, you know, this is really eyeballing things. Um, so it's okay if yours doesn't have exactly 4160. Maybe yours is at 4170, 4180, 4150. It's okay as long as it's reasonable. Now, the pro in real life situation, what happens is if we will do use computer to do this and it will be very exact. The computer knows how to draw like a perfect tangent line. We are trying to approximate that with a ruler. And, you know, uh, I'm especially for me because your graph should actually be even better than mine because I'm using, yeah, my, my screen is glass. It's slippery, right? Okay, so my second data point, okay, my second data point is actually going to be this one, um, which is 10 and 0. Okay, then using those two points, we can find the slope of the tangent line. So there you go. So at time you go to 20 second, my tangent line calculations goes like this. So the instantaneous velocity, so the instantaneous velocity is equal to rise over 1, which is 160 
160 minus uh, 0 and 40 minus 10. Okay, there we go. So instantaneous velocity and the slope mode of tangent line. So that's 160 over 30. 160 over 30. So now we need a calculator. So this gives you about 5.3 uh, meter per second. Box that. So now I know that when you are doing this on your own, you're most likely getting a very different numbers from what I have. But I would say as long as you're within like a reasonable amount of plus or minus one, for example, right? Like, for example, I would say six is okay. 4.8, 4.5 is okay. So if you're getting like plus or minus one in this kind of uh, practice exercise, that would be all right. Because I want to say that first, because uh, for example, you're doing two days homework uh, from the, you know, a page later, and suddenly you find that when you check the answer key, hey, how come the answer key uh, doesn't have exactly the number that I have? Now, if that question is this type of question, right, where you're trying to get an instantaneous velocity. Now, average velocity is different. Average velocity should be exact because average velocity, you're always using the two point that they are already giving to you uh, directly. So you're just dividing numbers. There's no way you can get some other numbers come um, other than the right answer. However, instantaneous velocity require you to draw a very objective tangent line first and your tangent line could be you know like we human cannot do perfect tangent line that's why we use computer to do it in reality uh in 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 um in reality so you if you're not getting exactly 513 that's okay that's okay now um if okay so i did the 20 second so if you want to try the 40 second uh you can again so you can pause the video, try the 40 second, and then I'll, uh, we will the answer. Okay, so for the 40 second, uh, at 40 second, so I'm getting around, um, so the instantaneous. Now, I don't want to write the word instantaneous all the time, so I'm just going to say INST next to the V. Approximately, I'm getting approximately 11.4. Uh, meter per second. So if you're getting like 12-ish thingy, 11, like 10.8-ish thingy, 10.5-ish thingy, then good. Okay, thank you. For instantaneous velocity, we do allow some leeway. Okay, so it's going to be a range of answer that uh, we accept. Okay, so now that is it, right? So that is it from uh, today's lesson. So you have uh, lesson number one uh, for note one, but lesson number two for note two. Uh, so yes, I will put again the description on the bottom uh, to tell you what you need to submit. So basically, we have to take attendance every day. So when I see you that day, then the attendance is done by you know me seeing you on the Zoom meeting, right? Uh, however, on these off day where we are not meeting face to face, your assignment or your homework question submission is your check-in remember uh, that means that's your attendance so if you didn't submit your homework then you are marked absent because you might say mr chong i watched your video i did the homework well but i didn't know <laughs> you have to tell me right you have to actually submit the homework so i will put all the description in uh on the post uh so just just read that uh basically i will pick a few questions and just do them take a picture with your phone that's the easiest way you can submit because i'm only checking these for completions right because the homework questions or the worksheet questions they already have the answer keys on the bottom right like look at this so for example like this is one of the question and the answer key is already at the bottom so i'm not checking if you have the right answers or not i'm checking if you actually attempt to do some exercise on your own or not so i'm only looking for completion so i'm not too worried about the format of how you're going to send this in so i guess the quickest way without people without hunting for a scanner is just to take a picture of your work and upload that picture onto the portal so i'll give you all the information on the post okay so that's it for today, okay? So I will see you all on Wednesday. Um, I'm. 
debating if we should still use the same Zoom link or make a new one. I think for security reason, we might have to make a new Zoom link every time uh, for our meetings. Then that means uh, the Zoom link will be sent to your email address. So if you have an update uh, with me, your preferred email address, um, please do so quickly. A, a couple of you have already have your parents send me email saying that, oh, this is actually my email. Please uh, replace this one with my daughter, my son's email so that he can get the email, uh, uh, you know, on his own. He can check more often. So yeah, sure. If you have those kind of preference, just send me your email and, but also send me which one you want me to delete because, you know, email address makes no sense, right? You might say, oh yeah, Mr. Chang, I am, uh, I'm David and I want you to uh, up, use this email to contact me instead. I want you to cancel my dad's email. I don't know what your dad's email was. I have like a list of emails and the name doesn't make any sense. A lot of people don't even use their last name or and first name on the email. So yeah, you have to tell me which one email is your parents email that I need to delete and which one is actually yours that I can, you know, add back in. Okay. So, uh, so if we have a new Zoom name or if I have any announcement to make, we are still using emails at this point. So for example, like today, right? I give you update through email, so that works. Uh, but if you have an email address that's belong to your parents, I don't want your parents to get like 10 emails from me every day. So uh, please update it, uh, update it with me. Okay, so tell me what the, what your preferred daily communication email is so I can send out new Zoom link to you uh, tomorrow for our meeting at 8 a.m. of course, at the same time on Wednesday. Okay, so goodbye everyone. Have a nice afternoon and hopefully the weather is nice and you can actually enjoy some sunshine. Okay, good night.